Sadness, I have a super important job just for you. Really? Mm-hmm. Follow me. What are you doing? And there. Perfect. This is the circle of sadness. Your job is to make sure that all the sadness stays inside of it. Who is sadness? Um, she is one of the five emotions that's roaming around that has been depicted in, in Riley's head. And um, she is, I think, like fear, not fear, um, anger, wants everything to be just. And Joy, of course, wants Riley to be happy. And so <clears throat> I think sadness is um, her, maybe part of her conscious or her heart. I, I love the part in the movie where Joy doesn't, you can see it in her face that she's not understanding why sadness is talking to Bing Bong. She just thinks that it's making it worse, you know. And um, when she asks sadness, why, why did, you know, how did you, and sadness goes, well, some, sometimes you just need someone to listen to you. And um, uh, I think that's a very important part for people to, you know, if someone is not feeling well, you don't have to say, hey, it's okay. You know, you can just listen to what they have to say and, and maybe that's what they need at that point. You know, it's unclear. I'm mostly cotton candy, but shape-wise, I'm part cat, part elephant, part dolphin. Dolphin? You gotta remember, when Riley was three, animals were all the rage. Pixar did a very wise thing, and they kept me out of the marketing and advertising. And uh, I, I didn't mind that, uh, although some of the ancillary things that they got to do with advertising was really great, like going to Cannes Film Festival. But I was not allowed to go to the Cannes Film Festival because they opted to keep my character a secret. And uh, when the film came out, and they, everybody said, oh my God, I, your character is so great. I realized Pixar is smarter than me. And they, they did the right thing. Bing Bong, you know, somebody, somebody likened me to like Edwin, uh, what Edwin's characters are. And if you, use, if you used Edwin's voice, he might have, I could see him be playing Bing Bong more than me. I thought that his voice matched what Bing Bong looked like. However, let's hope that I'm the only one in the world who thinks that way. He's making that stupid face again. I could strangle him right now. Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Oh, are you kidding me? So I play Riley's father, or uh, AKA the dad. Uh, he's a really loving, caring, uh, nurturing, uh, gentle father. Um, it just so happens that when we m meet them, um, they're about to transition um, to a new city. Uh, so the dad has, um, has a, this job opportunity uh, in San Francisco, and so he moves the family, uh, and he's incredibly preoccupied with this new uh, job and what it, what, what's needed to be done, and so his focus and his attention isn't necessarily um, as um, directed to his daughter and his wife as, as it was in the past. I have a, a little boy, he's seven now, and so I borrowed heavily on the relationship um, uh, and the experiences that I've had with him. Um, so um, the uh, birth, there's a scene where Riley is born and you see the mom and dad ooing and aahing over this. It wasn't, for me it wasn't quite ooing and aahing, it was more like, oh my God, and, and tremendous excitement and tears and laughter and all that for, for the firstborn. But um, other things, other little moments uh, in, the, in the movie, Riley is running down the hallway naked and dad's chasing after her with a towel, you know, and he's like, yes, my son loves to be naked, so I'm chasing after him with a towel eating broccoli mm -hmm. in, the, in the high chair moment. So there were a lot of things that I borrowed. Train of thought, right on schedule. <laughs> Anger, unload the daydreams. I ordered extra in case things get slow in class. Might come in handy if this new school is full of boring, useless classes. I, it was an, an interesting concept. Um, and I think that I 
oddly enough, um, wasn't sure exactly till the film was over. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I can remember Pete giving us like looking at storyboards around the room and Amy and I were specifically in this recording session together and he'd say, okay, this is Personality Island and this is Long-Term Memory and this is, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yes. And then afterwards, we both looked at you, I don't have a clue what he was talking about. <laughs> you know, we really, we really, it, it was hard for me um, to get a, the full view of the magnitude of this film until it was actually finished. Well, you got to understand, reading a Pixar script, uh, uh, it's, it's not the easiest thing to read uh, because things go on that, uh, that your imagination can't, uh, just can't grasp. And when they're starting to describe imagine, imagination land or that there are different islands like Family Island or whatever it is, that also is very difficult, and it's what what worried me actually with the movie. Could they translate all that? Could all of those rules for this universe uh, be communicated to the audience? And I had my doubts. I really did. Uh, and I think for a while they had their doubts because it didn't always work. But they work hard, and they work hard, and they work hard, and it became successful and they were able to do it. Not only can they do it, they did it in the first four minutes of the movie. They set up a world, a whole new world with consequences and different personalities, things we don't know, things we've never heard of before, and it worked. Uh, I mean, I uh, take my hat off to the filmmakers because that's not an easy um, thing to be able to accomplish. Um, and as you said, there's uh, something in there for everyone. So my son, who's seven, is laughing crazy at any time Fear, Bill Hader's character of fear is on because he's inevitably running into a wall or falling over a chair, or get, you know. And of course, uh, physical comedy when you're seven is king, you know. Um, uh, for adults, you know, you find yourself responding in, in, in surprising ways, unexpected ways to these very heightened situations, you know. And it's only after the fact that you go, you know, this is. This is animated, you know, it's not even there, but you're so engaged and so involved and that's a real testament to the filmmakers and, and their ability at, at storytelling, the absolute terrific skill they have at storytelling. I, can, can you imagine working at Pixar and knowing that you are making movies that generations of children will only view and it will only be positive for them, that the world is a better place because of what you've done and you're making people's lives better and I, in one movie, get to do that. That's great.